Panorama says it's uncovered evidence that the SAS executed detainees and murdered unarmed people in Afghanistan. One unit, they say, killed 54 people in suspicious circumstances, and senior officers didn't report what went on, didn't disclose evidence to the military police. And that last thing is very important, because the MOD says not only that the UK's armed forces served with courage and professionalism in Afghanistan, uh, but also that the service police carried out extensive and independent investigations into these allegations. They didn't bring charges uh, involved in Operation Northmore. Let us hear more on the allegations from Panorama's Richard Bilton. The helicopters were out most nights. In the winter of 2010, special forces were hunting the Taliban. But we have found some SAS units were out of control. It was November 2010 when British helicopters came to a small village in central Helmand. The SAS were targeting one property. Troops surrounded the perimeter and moved into the building. People here say that everybody in the house was brought into the courtyard and the Special Forces troops bound all the men's hands. And then one man was taken back inside and killed. The man was Haji Ibrahim, a former district governor, someone who'd worked alongside the British. A UN investigation found he was not a threat, but an unarmed civilian when he was shot dead. Haji Ibrahim's body was found by his son, Abdul Wali. His hands were tied at the front. He had been killed. They had shot him in the corner of his eye, and later they had fired the shot at my father's chest. Were there any weapons? in that house no we did not have anything like that at home and nothing was found a couple of nights before they came and searched the whole house but they did not find anything the suspicious killing was far from a one-off panorama has obtained military reports that show people were repeatedly shot dead after surrendering to the sas we traveled to afghanistan to investigate and found a shocking pattern in report after report, special forces claimed they sent a detainee back into the building to help with the search. The detainee was then shot after supposedly grabbing a weapon. Military insiders told Panorama the SAS accounts are implausible. Special forces routinely search and restrain detainees, so they shouldn't be able to get hold of weapons. David McBride is a former Australian Special Forces lawyer who served in Afghanistan. Impossible. If the person was so negligent, you'd be getting rid of the Special Forces guy. You'd be saying, you allowed someone to, to grab a grenade behind the curtain. You don't deserve to be in the Special Forces. You could have got everybody killed. So to see it time and again, how does that make you feel? It's, it's clearly uh, an orchestrated campaign of murders. Panorama looked in detail at one SAS tour. We identified 54 suspicious killings in just six months. We also spoke to military insiders who said they had witnessed unarmed Afghan people being shot dead. Our evidence suggests SAS executions went on for three years. Senior officers were warned and covered it up. We showed our evidence to Colonel Oliver Lee, who was commanding officer of the Royal Marines in Helmand in 2011. I think allegations of the kind that you're making are incredibly shocking. And if they are true, then they would make me deeply sad and also deeply angry. The Ministry of Defence says extensive investigations into the conduct of UK forces in Afghanistan found insufficient evidence to bring charges and that military police will consider any allegations should new evidence come to light. But some believe it is time to look again at the behaviour of SAS death squads that arrived in the night.